Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I will be bringing you the top 10 armies of May. If you're new around here, I base this list off of the top 3 placings from every ITC major and grand tournament that took place during the month of May. The armies that placed in the top 3 the most often got a higher spot on the list. If there were any ties, I would consider the past placings of that army on these lists and would use that as a tiebreaker. And if I needed another tiebreaker, it would come down to my opinion. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the top 10 armies of May. Number 10, Necrons. This time around, the Necrons find themselves at the 10th spot. Personally, I feel this army should still be top 5, but during the month of May, only one Necron army seemed to actually make top 3, and it was a Sotek list that was pretty cheesy. You've probably already heard about this list, it's the infamous Multiple Tesseract Vault list. Some people were using 3 of them in their list, but this list only featured 2 of the Cancer Balls. So if you don't know what these things do, to start off they are toughness 7 with 28 wounds with a 3 plus armor save and a 4 plus invul, meaning they are pretty durable. They also come with some pretty good guns, but that's not why people take these things. Tesseract vaults put out an obnoxious amount of mortal wounds that puts old smite spam to shame. These things get 4 katan abilities with 6 to choose from, most of which do multiple mortal wounds to units in a bubble, so it's kinda like smite spam but better. Except, these spells are relatively easy to get off and there is no way to deny them. That's right, these aren't psychic spells and instead these are treated as abilities, so there is literally zero ways to stop them. However, that doesn't mean this list is unbeatable. There are clear weaknesses to this type of list, which would be that they have a low model count so it's harder for them to claim more objectives than you if you have a faster army, and if you properly space out your units so that they don't get affected by as many mortal wound bubbles, then you should be okay as well. Also armies with feel no pains tend to do very good against this army, so stuff like Death Guard who get a 5 up feel no pain from their disgustingly resilient, they can take most of the brunt of the damage as well. Also a model like Magnus can make very easy work on one of these things. Death Hex on one of them and then his big smite plus one or two other smites and some shots at another one. Hopefully your shots and the mortal wounds will kill one of them and then Magnus charging the one that you death hex can probably kill that one or at least bring it down very 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 low. So there are ways to deal with them and beat this list which is why it's not that high up on the list. Only one of these tesseract lists actually placed in top 3 for the whole month so it goes to show it's not a perfect list. Number 9, Blood Angels. The Sons of Sanguinius are back on the top 10, even after the changes from the big FAQ. Like I said in my big FAQ coverage video, I knew Blood Angels would still do well as long as the players adapted to the changes and built new lists around the new rules. The big FAQ didn't kill any armies, it only killed certain lists. Unless you're a Grey Knights player, in which case you just got really screwed. The Blood Angels are hands down the best assault army the Imperium has to offer until the Space Wolves get their codex. And even then, after that, I think it could still be said that Blood Angels will have the best deep striking assault force the Imperium has to offer. They have some amazing stratagems that can catch your opponent off guard if they don't play against the army often, and some other stratagems that are still amazing even if your opponent knows they are coming, like the Descent of Angels stratagem. Their chapter tactic is absolutely amazing and helps them be more efficient when it comes to killing stuff in close combat. And it also helps the infantry be able to take down bigger models they normally wouldn't be able to. Overall, I think this army is great and I'm glad that my second favorite chapter is doing well. It makes me regret selling my Blood Angel army a couple of years ago. Number 8. Ultramarines. Ultra Smurfs are still on the list. There was only one placing this month and again the player didn't upload their list so I can't really comment on it. What I will assume though is that it probably had a detachment that used the Ultramarine keyword. I think that's safe to say. But all jokes aside, it was probably another gun line that either featured Gilliman or a lieutenant and captain combo and maybe even the captain being upgraded to a chapter master. It probably had a Storm Raven or two in it and it probably had some devastators in it and after that again I can't really say much because they didn't upload their list. Number 7, Inari. Only one Inari list this time around. They used some dark Eldar mixed with Eldar and of course Cat Lady was there too. Like I mentioned in the last top 10, I don't think Inari is the optimal way to play space elves anymore, but that doesn't mean that they aren't good. I just don't think that they are the go-to end all be all army that they were before the nerfs. Personally, I feel like playing Craft Worlds and Jukari as their own factions is better, and I have been saying it for a while. And if you're going to play them together, then just play them as Aldari instead of Inari. I think it's more optimal that way because the traits that the Space Elves have are really good. Number 6, Custodes. The Custodians are sweeping the community by storm, cleaning up all the heretic and Xenos filth. 
Puns aside, the Custodes have been doing very well for themselves in the past month with two placings in the top three at ITC events. I did not include Jeff and Control Robinson's placing at the London GT Invitational since that wasn't the main event and it was only an Invitational. If I had considered it, then the Custodes would be number four on the list, so take that as you will. Custodes are the best elite force the Imperium has, and it's because every model in the army has the stats of a regular Astartes character. They all have 2 plus armor saves with a 4 plus invulnerable save, they all have a weapon and ballistic skill of 2 plus, and they all have multiple wounds per model. The army is always accompanied by the Astra Militarum command point battery, which the Custodes really need since they don't start the game with many command points and their stratagems are very expensive. Both lists were very bike heavy and put around 1500 points of their 2000 point list into jet bikes and the jet bike captain, with the rest of the list being Astra Militarum. Number 5. Alpha Legion. This month, Alpha Legion gains a few spots and takes a seat at the halfway point on the list. There were only two Alpha Legion lists this month, and if you're wondering why they beat out Custodes because they're tied, well that's because of how I determined the tiebreakers, which was explained at the beginning of the video. So these lists featured a bunch of Nurgle demons alongside some Slaneshi demons. Cultist bombs are still a thing, and bringing a Sorcerer and Chaos Lord alongside them to buff them is still being used as well. Only now you actually have to infiltrate the Sorcerer and the Lord instead of deep striking them in with jump packs because of the big F. FAQ changes. List wise, this is still basically your normal average run of the mill Alpha Legion list, at least in competitive, where it runs tons of cultists and then of course some demons to help them out. Overall, I'm glad my favorite Legion to play is moving up its way into the top 10. Number 4 Craft Worlds. Eldar takes their spot just outside the top 3 this month. All of the lists featured allies, which were usually Dark Eldar, but focused a lot on the Eldar Psykers and Wave Serpents. The other lists also featured Dark Eldar, but had some Hemlocks and Rangers. The craft world used in both lists was a Laytalk, which I personally think is the best choice. Now let's get into the top three armies of May. Number three, Tau. Tower back and form and take their place as the third best army for the month of May. Like I mentioned in the last video, I personally think this is a top 5 army overall, so I'm glad their spot on the list is showing that. The lists that were used were two Borkan Seps and one Tau Sept. The units used were usually Fire Warriors with some Commanders and of course some Drones. And in one of the other lists, they actually used three Riptides, which made me happy since that's my favorite unit in the whole army. I used to watch Gundam Wing when I was young, and these suits really remind me a lot of that show. Overall, I'm glad the fish people are claiming their rightful spot on the top five, and I think they will stick around for a while. Number two, Astro Militarum. The Imperial Guard takes up the second spot this time around. There were five lists that topped the events this month, with one being Cadian and the other four being Katachan. So I guess now we can start saying that Katachan seems to be the best regiment, at least for now. Personally, I still think I prefer Cadia, but to each their own. Every list used three Hellhounds, which are tanks that have some really strong flamers on them, and with the Katachan rule, they get to re-roll the number of hits, making them really strong. They also explode very easily, so the idea is to drive them up into the enemy's face and flame some stuff to death and then explode in their lines and do even more damage. Basilisks were also used and of course a ton of mortars. People don't think too much about it either, but the infantry are pretty damn good in close combat as well since they are strength 4. So arming your sergeant with something like a power sword isn't a bad idea if you're going to be moving up the board. Because with some of the buffs you can give these guys, they can actually hit stuff pretty hard and cause a lot of problems for your opponent. It's always funny seeing the look of bewilderment on your opponent's face as your Astra Militarum infantry actually move closer to them. You can use that one stratagem to combine your squads and then buff that one squad to make it a super squad and it can put out some serious hurt if it gets into your opponent's face. Overall though, I'm glad the guard are still doing well and I'm glad I was proven right that the guard would be very good after the big FAQ changes. Number 1. The best army in May goes to Drukhari. The Dark Eldar made a good showing on their debut into the top 10 list at the number 1 spot. I don't think in any other top 10 list we've seen an army that just instantly rose to the top like Drukhari has without previously being on the list. Drukhari now have the most sub-factions in the game since they have Cabals, Witch Cults, and Homunculus Covens, and then they have multiple of each of those. And so far, all three sub-factions have been in lists that have topped, although the factions themselves were usually always the same. The vast majority of Cabal players used Cabal the Blackheart, while Witch players usually used Cult of Strife, and Homunculus Coven players used Prophets of Flesh. Sometimes the Dark Eldar players opted to bring Eldar allies, but not every list did. In fact, most of the lists just combined Covens, Cabals, and Cults, making it a pure Jakari army. The army is insanely fast and the power from pain rule is one of the strongest rules in the game and gives so many buffs to your armies. 
Most armies get one rule that does one thing, but Drakari have one rule that gives five different bonuses throughout the game. Their armory is also filled with a bunch of weapons that are insanely good, and they have access to the best stratagem in the game as long as you have a Blackheart detachment, and that stratagem is Agents of Vect. For three command points, on a roll of a 2+, plus, you can cancel out one of your opponent's stratagems and they get their command points back, but cannot use that stratagem for the rest of the phase. And if you roll a 6 for that roll, then you cancel their stratagem and they still have to pay for it. This stratagem is a game changer, it makes Drakari really feel like a blue deck for Magic the Gathering. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Magic the Gathering, blue decks are control decks that often lead to broken friendships. Overall, I think we are going to see this army place well on this list for the foreseeable future, and I can easily say that I think Dark Eldar are probably the strongest army in the game right now. So that's going to be it for this video. I know I talked much longer about some armies than others, but that's because a lot of these armies have been on the list many times and others haven't. So I figured I'd give more time to talk about the new armies and less time to talk about the armies we've seen many times before. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out some of my other content. I make competitive battle reports and guides for how to play Warhammer 40k competitively. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Warhammer 40k content. And if you're already subscribed but would like to help to support the channel even further, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Wargaming.